I suppose the city that stands out for me of, of itself um, and where, where I've personally been busy has been, has been Dublin. Um, I think it's just a very interesting dynamic. You know, when we started looking to acquire land there for clients, it felt a little bit like Spain a few years ago when nothing stacked up. Now it flies. That said, we shouldn't, for this audience, dwell too long on it because it's impossible to build significant scale there. And if you're looking to deploy adequate amounts of capital um, into markets, then you know, I think you need to go for markets that, that offer um, that degree of scale. So for me, it leads me back to the, to the bigger European markets. It's difficult to get money into the, into the UK now, but Germany and France are still there. Netherlands is tight, but it's still very interesting. And as, you know, as Ian's alluded to, there are some, some real opportunities further east. Um, I also think some of, the, some of the southern European markets are relatively overlooked. Um, in terms of there's, there's not a lot happened there, and some of the secondary assets do look very cheap there relative to other markets. They come with risk, of course. Um, no one's saying that they don't. But if they're on a similar trajectory to other more established markets in terms of the how secondaries played out there, um, I think that's very interesting. And I'd, and I'd probably raise you know, Northern Italy as, a, as an example of that. Yeah, it's less the where for us more than the what or, okay. or which, which, you know, which sectors we would look, not sectors, but which um, you know, type of assets we would, we would look at. We're already in you know, the major markets. Is, if anything, it's, we have to go deeper in those. Uh, and so what do we look for with the scarcity of really good products that we're seeing coming to the market these days? It's, you know, I would look more for um, value add acquisitions, vacancy, short leases, uh, value add conversions, redevelopment. This is a big focus, especially if it's, um, you know, they're well located, uh, whether it's a factory and, or an old warehouse, tear it down and, and redevelop something to, to, newer, uh, to newer warehouses. This is a big focus. It's value add at the moment because uh, or spec to actually um, if you can find the land, the land is proving very expensive unless you are lucky enough to have quite a lot at the moment. Um, and I just wrote where there's a lack of supply leading to rental growth, and I still think at the moment we've got this question mark: where can you actually really get rental growth? Because so many of the users and operators do have very very thin margins, and they really can't afford that much extra rent. To be honest, quite a few of them. We've mentioned that some of the uh, 3PL operators and the like in Crosstalk, they can because they've got sort of high value business. But it is actually, it's a smaller part of the market than the overall. And I still like, despite <coughs> um, what we've said about London, I still think there's going to be growth in and around the London area because it is such a, a massive area. And it's basically, where is there a lack of supply? Where is there still growing demand? Bear in mind the population of London is increasing 100,000 per annum. There's got to be some good, some numbers or some demographics that work there. Paris, similarly, albeit it's not quite the same, and I'd be in a Paris rather than going out, because around Paris there's a lot more land available. Not was easy to build, but it's a much bigger country. Um, Germany, we've touched on, I've said the Ruhrgebiet. Why? Because it's so big. Um, it's 11 million odd people. People tend to forget it is one massive conurbation, albeit seven or eight cities. And I still think there's opportunities there, albeit as in most places in Germany, rental growth is pretty flat. And you've really got to work out where you're going to see that little bit of upside. Maybe Munich, albeit it's sort of a little bit standalone, but price of all has been um, quite expensive there. And two other areas I just wrote down was the Benelux, the Randstad, I still think all the trade coming through, Antwerp coming through, um, Rotterdam coming through Schiphol, that's a great location for logistics. And there's, there's an undersupply-ish, ish at the moment, new, new kit. So maybe. And the last one I just put down was um, recovery in Spain. Madrid, Barcelona, provided you're not too far out. And if we've all been down to, you know, going around Madrid and the various, as the new M25s get built further and further out, um, it increases the ability or the supply side. You're further in, you've still got um, a lack of stock there. Albeit, be careful, because a lot of people, I think, are asking prices that are way too high. Yeah, I was going to pick up actually on Joseph's point about as much what as where. Uh, I'm a keen follower, as I'm sure many people are in this room, of uh, Jim Mellon and um, his views on pharma and life sciences. And I think, I think in the same way that um, technology and the iPad has been the defining in, uh, innovation for consumers in the last uh, five to ten years, I think life sciences and pharma are going to be increasingly important over the next ten to twenty years in ways that we can't quite imagine now. And I think, uh, I'm sure some of you read the book Cracking the Code, which is a, it's a bloody good read if you haven't. 
I think the next 10 years we're going to see demand for logistics or warehousing facilities that meet the needs of life sciences and the life science industries. From ph pharma is going to grow considerably and I think there's an opportunity there, certainly for us, which we're already already working in. Okay. Will that be chilled units or what? It'll be a whole series of technologies in those buildings, and no question. And when we come down to where is the value going to be, there's more value in that than there is, in my opinion, building generic sheds on the edge of urban locations. Well, what we're seeing is that some cities, um, and you know, my part of the business is continental Europe, so I suppose I spend much more time there than I do physically here. But um, what we're seeing is some of those cities are growing at much faster rates than the, their domestic economies, and we think that will persist. Uh, and hence, we've been focused on the big cities um, and their regions. And the thing is, is, I mean, the geography that we're talking about here is vast. Uh, so, you know, there are a number of those cities that we think will outperform, and that's where we've been spending more of our time. Um, if I was buying logistics, if, if I was looking uh, today for best value, I think I'd certainly be in, um, in areas of the French market, uh, Barcelona and Milan. I mean, we all see uh, you know, with our, um, uh, our shareholders, we look at the returns we get when we buy things. So there are some markets where you're not going to see the returns you want and that's absolute core core. You know, Tesco's 25 years on the, M20, on the M25. That's not for us, but it'll be for someone else, so that's quite good. I think on the markets, you know, obviously we're about 60% of our uh, warehouses actually is in Central Europe. So we still see Central Europe as very much a, an area we can grow in uh, and can build upon the expertise we have in those markets. And our local teams, whether it be Romania, Poland, um, I think Poland is becoming tougher to do deals in, um, but I think still we, we, so we invested heavily in the Czech Republic and the, the very, the, from there you can distribute to the whole of Europe. So most of you, if you've got kids, you've got Lego. Every bit of Lego in, your, um, in Europe has come through, actually it's the Prologis mm -hmm. warehouse, <laughs> but it's, it's, I use it because it's, um, it is somewhere where you can distribute to the whole of Europe from there. And so for a lot of these XXLs you talk about, um, that's an area that, that, that will attract them. But no, I think, I, I think there's, there's, there's opportunity because demand is increasing. Um, the, uh, the, the, the tenants are, um, who have not moved for quite a long time are now looking at should they have builder suits. There's no uh, spec being built or very, very little. So people are having to have builder suits and that might change in a couple of years time when, if specs start to come back. Um, but no, I think there's, there's opportunity in, in nearly all countries. And okay. I actually feel if I agree that France at long last is showing some signs of life. And that to me has been the elephant in the room of Europe. Everyone talks about all the other problems. Actually France has been a major, major problem. Um, but that's now coming back. Spain is coming back. In most places you're seeing it. Uh, and France coming back because demand. the demand is coming back from occupiers? Yes. Okay.